Hello, I'm Anna Wiltos bringing you another critique from a Huffington Post article. And today we are going to look at this article that was written um, actually also on the day I'm recording, just like last time. The reason I made another video isn't because I thought, wow, this really needs me to make a video. It was because I had some time and I decided, well, I already made a gameplay video today, so I might as well do something a bit uh, more political. Anyway, Rory Moore is guilty of abusing girls and religion. Now, of course, that first allegation has been heard uh, many times recently. I don't know that much about uh, Roy Moore, so I can't really comment on uh, whether or not I think that's something that actually happened. Uh, but nevertheless, um, those are serious allegations that, of course, merit an investigation. And if he uh, is found guilty in court then, of course, he'll he'll uh, be guilty. But, of course, I don't know anything about Roy Moore, so that isn't something I'm going to be really commenting about this time around. And religion, though. And I think this is the part where I think I'm going to be commenting on. So I don't actually know what this article's take is going to be, so I may agree uh, quite a bit or I may disagree, but let's find out. Roy Moore is guilty of sex assault and abusing Christianity and language about God. And then it shows a picture of um, an elderly lady who is dressed in uh, what I would call a very uh, patriotic uh, attire. She's carrying two flags. Wow. And she's got a uh, Judge Roy Moore uh, for Senate. And uh, with a website on that, that's uh, uh, very uh, current, and taking a stand for God. And then a little cross here. So uh, we're definitely getting the image uh, that, that of what's happening here. So anyway, in the philosophy of language, we learn that, uh, we learn the simple truth that the meaning of a word is how it's used in a sentence. You mean context, but uh, I guess uh, that's another way to say context. The same lesson can be applied to religion, with the meaning of religious language best understood by how it is being used. I think that's something that I can agree on. Now, of course, uh, there may be some situations where that may be uh, more or less true, but uh, for now, I think that's very agreeable. Very agreeable. I recalled this lesson this past week. Uh, this is James Zogby, uh, which is a contributor to the Huffington Post. Um, by the way, please do not harass this person. I recalled this lesson this past week as I listened to some evangelical Christians defending Judge Roy Moore, the Republican candidate for U.S. Senate in Alabama. Moore has been charged with sexually assaulting and abusing. So he's actually been charged, which means that uh, that he is going to stand trial for this, but he hasn't uh, he hasn't yet been uh, convicted. Assaulting and abusing at least seven girls when he was in his 30s, and they were between 14 and 18 years old which, of course, is uh, very problematic because that's illegal. Uh, well, uh, assaulting and abusing in itself is illegal, but we're, we're getting a bit statutory here as well. And I, I personally do like to make uh, a dichotomy between um, what I would call uh, the idea of consent-based rape and statutory rape in that... Um, I'm a very realistic person on that matter where I think that I, what I'm thinking is the term rape, I don't know if it really applies to individuals who are consenting but are under age, but I'm not saying that that's right. I'm still saying that's wrong. I'm just saying that maybe we should use a different word because the word rape in itself implies uh, the consent issue. Now, you might be coming from a philosophical position that people of a certain age cannot uh, consent and I, I guess I see where you're coming from but I think that's uh, demonstrably wrong and I think it would be better to just use a different word to define it now what word I would use to define such a crime I don't know maybe um, maybe let, let me think pedosexuality there you go there you go, pedosexuality. 
the next uh, the next thing to add to our little uh, uh, alphabet soup of terms. The stories that women tell are painful to hear, and given the preponderance, ooh, nice word, of other evidence against more clearly believable. Okay, I don't know much about more. So I can't really tell whether it's believable or not. So I'm going to give the writer of the article the benefit of a doubt and say, let's let's assume that it's believable. In the face of all this, Moore has plummeted. But of course, we since he hasn't been convicted yet, we also have to give him the benefit of the doubt as well. I'm just saying that for the purpose of this article, I'm giving the writer of the article the, the benefit of a doubt. I'm not actually accusing Moore of anything because I don't actually have any information on that just so that everyone knows where I'm coming from here. In the face of all this, Moore has plummeted in recent statewide polls with the most recent Fox News poll showing his him losing to the Democratic candidate Doug Jones by a 50 to 41 percent margin. What I found disturbing, however, was that white voters who self-describe as evangelical Christians continuing to support Moore by a 73% to 20% margin. That's, what is that? That's a very wide margin. Was that white? Okay, the dis, what I found disturbing, so I found this disturbing, that white voters who self-identify as uh, continuing to support that clause doesn't have that clause doesn't have a subject or when well, no, it, it is it does have a subject white voters white voters who self I describe okay that clause doesn't have a a verb is what I'm trying to say here uh, continuing is not the correct word to use here uh, who self-describe as evangelical Christians, which is subsumed into the that white voters, and continuing to support more by a margin is also subsumed because continue to support more by a 73 to 20 percent margin would be grammatically correct here. Maybe I'm being a bit too uh, grammar Nazi on this one because um, the way I'm talking right now isn't the most grammatically accurate way in itself. But I think that if you're actually writing something that you're going to publish, maybe you need to be a, a little bit more careful with that. So, uh, James Zogby, I've got you back there. Um, got your back. I'll be there for you. After the women came forward with the charges of abuse and assault, Moore's Christian defenders went overboard using religious imagery to describe the situation. So before we get to that, I actually want to pull back here to uh, what was previously said. That white voters who self-identify as evangelical Christians continue to support Moore by uh, such a margin. So here's the problem here. The problem I find with this sentence is that it's very vague. It says that white voters, so it's immediately gathering a whole group of people, and it's not distinguishing between white voters who don't do this. So these are white voters who describe themselves as Christians. It continue to support more. But I think there's also some black voters in there as well. There's voters of various races, probably. I mean, statistically speaking, there's likely to be someone from every race voting uh, for this individual. So I think that maybe we're we're stacking on the race a bit too much in this article already. But let's see. Let's see. If, or, or maybe it's just more highly concentrated among white voters. That could be something as well. I don't want to discredit uh, uh, James Dogby here. I just want to point out that race has been brought up in this article so far. Okay, and they use religious imagery to describe the situation. One bizarrely attempted to justify Moore's abuse of a 14-year-old 
by comparing it to the biblical narrative, take Joseph and Mary. Mary was a teenager and Joseph was an adult carpenter. They became the parents of Jesus. And Moore's brother said the judge was being persecuted like Jesus Christ was. Now, here's the problem. Uh, here's the problem here. The problem with this is, of course, that number one, uh, in that part of the Bible, Mary actually did not have sexual relations with Joseph, even though they were betrothed. And they weren't quite married yet at the time as well. Uh, of course, they were uh, betrothed in a manner that they, of course, were going to be fully married, but they weren't married yet. Um, and they were betrothed. Um, in addition to that, generally, historically speaking, a lot of people considered um, a adulthood to begin um, after puberty. So once you've had your puberty and you were uh, actually capable of uh, sexual reproduction, then you would be considered an adult. And this, and the, and this continued into the Middle Ages. Um, but eventually, in some cultures, it, of course, was different, and in today's culture, it is considered different as well. However, it is important to note that this person is not being, uh, not, is not making a good comparison here because Mary actually did not have sexual relations with anyone if you actually read the Bible on that part. And persecuted like Jesus was, honestly... I would need to see a wider quote because uh, that in itself uh, would require justification, and I don't really see any justification in that right now. I was in Alabama this past week when I saw a televised Moore event at a church and listened to a group of pastors passionately defending their candidate. The religious language and imagery used by Moore and his supporters is both disturbing and confounding. So... Uh, again, I don't think that uh, it's good to use, uh, uh, especially if you're a Christian, I don't think it's good to use your faith specifically as a tool for your political purposes. I think that's really, uh, that's, that's really the point where instead of trying to be a good Christian here, you're actually uh, trying to cuck God in, in a way. But uh, I don't know if that's exactly what they're doing, but uh, let's see. At the event called God Save America, okay, we've got some American exceptionalism going here. Moore compared his election to a spiritual battle for the soul of America. That is definitely overstated. Moore's remarks, Moore's remarks that if we don't come back to God, we're not going anywhere were echoed by his supporters. I think that's that's a fair thing for a Christian to say. That's that's something that a, a Christian should be able to get behind. But that being said, I think that it is a bit toxic the way a lot of uh, Christians uh, prop up America as being some sort of chosen nation. Uh, and the reason I think that's a bit toxic is because, number one, uh, from a biblical standpoint, your um, your priority of loyalty and of your citizenship is to God uh, before your country. And number two, the Bible doesn't explicitly mention the U.S. anywhere in there anyway, so no real reason to, to put that there. Uh, no real reason to give it any more spiritual significance than any other country. To be honest, when asked how they, I'm not saying that the United States is a bad country. I love living in the United States. There's many great things in the United States that you can't find in many other places of the world. I'm just saying that this, at a spiritual level, I think many people are going a bit too far. When asked how they could continue to vote for him, two women offered that Moore was doing God's work. We took a path away from God. We need someone open to bring God back. Now, here's, of course, the moral issue here. If Moore did indeed commit uh, these crimes, and they are crimes, and if, if it is indeed assault 
and abuse of underage individuals. That really questions uh, his moral character, uh, which, of course, sh should be an important thing when you're voting for someone. The moral character does matter somewhat. And this is one of the reasons why I personally chose not to uh, vote for Trump. Now, of course, there are many other reasons. I thought Trump was very inconsistent in some points and was flip-flopping over all over the place and that he was also very rude to the other candidates. And I didn't like that very much either. And on policy issues, there are just other candidates that I liked more than Trump. So I ended up voting third party um, because I, I really didn't like Trump. Hillary at all. <laughs> that wasn't going to happen from the beginning. And uh, it's just that the, the more Trump spoke, originally I was I was sort of, yeah, Trump's okay, but the more Trump spoke, the less I liked him. And uh, that, I guess that's really the, the sad point. I, I missed the Trump train. Everybody was all aboard and, and I missed the train. And now I'm, uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm on the edge of, uh, of, of the political community because I I didn't <laughs> I didn't get any major candidate to vote for in the election okay in a series of tweets Moore described the charges against him saying the forces of evil will lie cheat steal even inflict p physical harm if they believe it will silence and shut up Christian conservatives like you and me so he's accusing them of being false charges. We have a duty to stand up against the forces of evil waging an all-out war on our conservative values. Now, I, I find it interesting that he is, con he is he's using this religious language here and then applying it specifically to conservatism. Maybe... I think it would have been better placed if he were to say Christian values. And of course, he can't say that because there's many non-Christians who are conservatives and he's trying to be inclusive. He's trying to uh, appeal to his base and he doesn't want to be overly religious because he knows that that's going to be very controversial and the, many voters don't like that. But if you're going to, to bring up Christianity here and bring up Christian values, then then what's the point of having to also add conservative? Now, I'm not saying that there's a huge difference. There are many things that are similar, but there are some points where you would have atheist conservatives differ from Christian conservatives. And if you're going to be consistent with uh, things that you consider good and evil and, and all these different things, I think that that is a distinction worth making. Just saying. Using God's... Using God language and appealing to Christian values has long been Moore's modus operandi. As a judge, he had the Ten Commandments hung in his courtroom. He later famously had a 5,000 pound granite carving of the commandments placed outside the courthouse, which, after refusing an order to have it removed, resulted in his being stripped of his position and removed from the bench. Now, of course, let me just say something. If you're already hanging it in your courtroom, do you really need to put it outside of your courthouse? Because it is important to remember that although as a Christian, you believe that these are are fundamental uh, laws, it, as a politician, these are actually not the laws of the United States. Although, in principle, they are uh, definitely an inspiration to those laws and, and do have a historical significance for it. But did you really need to put a 5,000-pound granite carving of the commandments outside of a courthouse? That sounds like something that cost a lot of taxpayer money. Now, if he paid it with his own money, maybe it's not so bad, but still, you're really pushing the point here. During his primary campaign, Moore was endorsed by a number of pastors who issued a statement saying, in part, dishonesty, fear of man, and immorality are an affront to our convictions and our savior Dishonesty, fear of man. I don't know what exactly they're trying to say here with fear of man. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with that terminology. 
so I can't really comment on that. And we don't put up with it anymore. Join us at the polls to cast your vote for Roy Moore. So what they're saying is that Roy Moore is a candidate that's going to stand up to dishonesty, uh, fear of man, and immorality. Now, of course, if the charges are true, then he's, he's definitely failed on the immorality and by denying the charges on the uh, dishonesty as well. And, and I, I still don't know about what they mean by fear of man here. But the charges may be false. I don't know. I'm not... I'm not a legal expert. I haven't been following this story very closely, so I don't know whether it's true or false. So I have to give both sides a bit of a benefit of a doubt. But remember, as the United States, we still have laws, including the presumption of innocence. Steve Bannon! Yay! Good big clap, Steve Bannon. Uh decided to mix things up one bit more. The former White House advisor, uh, honestly... I wasn't too into Steve Bannon, especially after he said, "Yep, we're we're all we're all for that uh, populist nationalism." I'm thinking, eh, I don't know if I like populism. Um, honestly, that's not my cup of tea. Came to Alabama to work for Moore, saying that Judge Moore knows the Ten Commandments is the basis of a Judeo-Christian West. But guess what? As a judge, it's uh, not the actual laws of the United States. Now that being said, I personally could not recommend the Ten Commandments more. They are very important. Um, they are uh, an indictment against communism. That's right, for all you Christian communists out there, read the Ten Commandments and give up, because guess what? Property rights do matter. Read it. It's in the Ten Commandments. <laughs> okay. The Trump administration official echoed this saying. He, more specifically, is truly someone who reflects the Judeo-Christian values that were so important to the establishment of our country. Okay. And of course, if the allegations are true, then that statement would be untrue. The lessons I learned about language have taught me not to take this rhetoric at face value, rather to discern the meaning that lies behind these words. Ooh, uh-oh. Are we going to to do some, uh, some mind reading here? Let's see if that's uh, the direction we're going. We must wade through this God talk. That's right. Don't know what to call it. It's... it's, it's it's God talk and dig below the surface to understand what Moore and his supporters are really saying, what issues they are embracing and when they speak of Christian values. Okay, let's see. On closer examination, the Christian values that emerge are often tied up with sex. Well, that's that's more how they uh, how they disagree with your values, probably. It's not. It's not that they're tied up with sex. It's more that they. That's the point of contention that you have with it specifically. Now, of course, there are many other points of contention, but uh, uh, for example, some some people might really like stealing stuff, and then that would be oh, it's tied up with property rights. Those Christian values. Get rid of them now. Moore is anti-abortion, anti-gay rights. I don't know about that one. I don't know about Moore, but most people that are called anti-gay rights, you you might have to ask what they mean, what you mean when you say anti-gay rights specifically, as in what gay rights are. You should define that so that we know what you mean when you say someone is anti-gay rights, because I think that term has been abused, the term gay rights, to imply that some people, uh, the implication is that this person wants to uh, have less rights for people that are gay, uh, specifically uh, removes fundamental rights of some sort. But of course, what, what I know that this person intends is that this person means that the this person probably is more just uh, against gay marriage and 
and stuff like that. Anti-sex education in schools and pro-censorship laws. These concerns reflect the general discomfort that some middle-aged, middle-class Americans have with a changing social order and evolving social mores. But that's not all. Their Christian agenda also includes healthy doses of hyper-chauvinism. Disgusting. Moore claims that America is a Christian nation that dare not turn against God. He blames 9-11 on our turning away from God. Islamophobia. Moore said that Islam is a false religion. <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh no oh man i'm gonna spend some time on this paragraph islamic law is incompatible with our law and falsely claim that some u.s cities were already under sharia anti-immigrant he has called for the u.s military to block Im migrants crossing the border and the racial inferiority of blacks and hispanics where his facebook page is filled with disgraceful portrayals of both groups Oh, <laughs> oh no oh my goodness this is this is so cliche <laughs> this paragraph here i man the clicheness of this paragraph <laughs> this is basically what the the stereotype of what a social justice warrior is condensed into one paragraph here oh boy anti-abortion if he's a christian of course he's going to be anti-abortion. So that's entirely consistent. Uh, Anti-gay rights. Um, yes, Christianity. The orthodox or the correct doctrine of Christianity is that homosexuality is not okay. There you go. That's plain. I've read the Bible it says it both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. There's no ambiguity about it. As much as some people like to place some ambiguity in there, it's just not in the text. So, yep, that those are both Christian positions there. Anti-sex education in schools. Um, that's more of a philosophical thing, I think, rather than a religious thing in there. Uh, because uh, the Bible doesn't really talk about that. Pro-censorship laws. Um, I don't know what kind of censorship this is, and so I can't really comment on that specifically, but uh, I, I'm generally a more free speech person, so I don't really know about that. These concerns reflect the general discomfort that some middle-aged, middle-class Americans... That's right. Let's, let's condense this into a group. Into a group... That, that we can set aside from our group so that we can discriminate against that group and and uh, make them the villain and create an us versus them mentality. I think that's what's subconsciously happening in the writer's mind here. So he's characterizing these people as middle-aged, middle-class Americans, uh, which have a changing social... Okay... So, okay, have with, and these are, this is a discomfort that they have with a changing social order and evolving social mores. Now, of course, what, what the question here should be, are these changes good? And the question for that should be, what defines how society should be? And uh, what are good social mores? What is a good social order what is a bad social order what is what are bad social mores and where do we find these things out where do we have a foundation for our moral values i think that's a discussion that needs to be had but unfortunately is generally not where uh we're coming from but of course some people think that change evolution it's all good doesn't matter where it's going, as long as it's it's, it's changing. We're, we're always getting better, which uh, is uh, not very realistic way of thinking, that things are just going to get better that way. But I don't, I don't think that's, that that's the exact implication that the writer has, so let me not accuse the writer of that. But that's not all. Their Christian agenda 
Yep, that's right. It's an agenda. These people have a plan to put all these policies into action. Hyper chauvinism. And in parentheses, I believe would be what? No, that doesn't actually describe sh chauvinism in here. So hyper chauvinism is stated, but not qualified. So I don't know what Moore actually, whether or not Moore is a chauvinist. I have no idea. But if you're describing Christians in general, uh, then I don't think that Christianity is very chauvinistic because Christianity acknowledges that in that number one, men, are, men and women are different. That's not to say that men and women are superior to one another. They're just different and therefore are more likely to play different social roles. Not saying that there can't be some overlap because there is some overlap and there's no problem with Christianity with women own, owning businesses. Um, this is something that actually we see in the New Testament of the Bible. There are women that own businesses and nobody ever thought that it was a problem. There's no problem with all these different things. And men have an obligation to protect women and in a marriage, there are certain obligations that men and women have to each other. And if these obligations are broken, then it becomes grounds for a divorce, which of course, uh, ideally speaking, it would be best to try to fix whatever issue is occurring in a marriage that is causing a divorce. However, because many times this doesn't happen for example in cases of repeated domestic violence then there has to be a breaking there but um but just so everyone knows the christian position is not that women can't work or women can't leave the home or that women shouldn't wear shoes that is not a christian position just so that everyone knows who doesn't already realize islamo okay wait no let's let's take a look at this parenthetical moore claims that america is a christian nation i I'd, i would ask him to prove it because there are many people in charge of a country that aren't christians and there and there are many people that call themselves christians who obviously aren't so um to call it a christian nation i think would be going a bit farther than you should uh, that dare not turn against God he blames 9-11 on our turning away from God now to place an exact causality of uh, people turning away from God to causing 9-11 I think is uh, fallacious um, and not logical from a Christian standpoint uh, because otherwise you can you can be like Job's friends and blame Job for all the bad things in his life and say that he must have done some pretty bad stuff just because all these bad things are happening to them. And and the book of Job does prove that that is an incorrect uh, way of thinking. Not that Job didn't have any sin, but uh, that um, sometimes bad things happen to good people. And sometimes... Good things happen to bad people, and that has nothing to do uh, with uh, your own merit, but has more to do with the fact that it's a fallen world from a Christian standpoint here. Islamophobia, Moore has said that Islam is a false religion. Now, if now let's let's take a look at this from a Christian perspective here. It, let's let's take your mind and and put it in the head of a Christian. Let's see, what, how would a Christian, uh, why would a Christian say that Islam is a false religion? Well, maybe because the theology of Christianity and Islam are mutually exclusive. That means that if Christianity is true, and honestly, if you don't believe your religion is true, why would you even believe it in the first place? If you believe that Christianity is true, then Islam is going to have to be false. If you believe Islam is true, then Christianity has to be false. I don't think that there's anything phobic 
or or fearful about this. It's just a statement of logic uh, from a theological standpoint. Islamic law is incompatible with our law, which, uh, and yes, the way Sharia is, the way Sharia law is is applied in many countries is definitely different than it is in the U.S. And if someone were to execute uh, the the same sorts of punishments or um, the, the, the same legal processes in the U.S. without changing U.S. law, then that person would be seen as someone who is breaking the law because some of the things that Sharia law does are things that are considered criminal in the U.S. Therefore, it is not compatible by example. And falsely claimed that some U.S. cities were already under Sharia. And I think that's based on a story where there was a community that was trying to set up Sharia. But uh, I, I don't think they actually managed to succeed there. Anti-immigrant. He has called for the U.S. military to block migrants crossing the border. Now, that's not, first of all, that's not an anti-immigration stance. That's a safe border stance. An anti-immigration stance would be if he were to say that he doesn't want anyone from other countries to come to the U.S. That would be an anti-immigrant stance. And, and blocking people from crossing the border... Uh, in places that they shouldn't be crossing is something that's very logical for a nation that has borders. And the racial inferiority of blacks and Hispanics. Moore's Facebook page is filled with disgraceful portrayals of both groups. I don't know about this, but I, I have no idea of what Moore puts on his Facebook. I'm not someone that's active on Facebook. I don't even have a Facebook Um so I don't know whether this is something that Moore actually does, but the fact that you're using a vague term, uh, disgraceful portrayals, instead of trying to quote something that he may have said or, uh, or something like that, implies to me that maybe, just maybe, you're getting upset over some memes. That, that's probably what it is. I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't seen Where's Facebook. I don't know if it's if it's uh, filled with memes. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if he just has some, some random pictures of people. But you're not quoting him, so I don't really have any reason to believe that this is true because you're not actually offering any evidence. What emerges from a review of Moore's use of language is that keeping America Christian ultimately means keeping America white. Wait, wait a second. Please walk me through this logic. Please. I want to know where this is coming from. This this is just something out of the blue, just associating Moore's idea with Christianity, with whiteness. I don't know where this is coming from. I need the evidence. Give me some quotes. Give me a logical run through of how you got to this idea, because so far I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing that. You're accusing him of uh, disgracefully portraying blacks and Hispanics, but not actually offering what kind of portrayals. Um, and the, the only other time you mentioned race here is... Uh, when you were talking in general about a group of people and not actually necessarily about him himself. So where is this coming from is what I'm wondering. There's no logical point where I get this from this article. And protecting a lifestyle that exists mostly as a mythic 1950s construct of our popular culture. Now, that being said, there are people who lived in the 1950s who do remember it as being a prosperous time. But there are also some people that uh, were a, a bit oppressed due to uh, Jim Crow laws during that time as well. So it, it is worth noting that uh, both sides of that exist. And that the prosperity and the oppression did not necessarily coincide with the same regions of the country. In other words, by being prosperous, these people weren't oppressing others, is what I'm trying to say. 
It is God language masking. What is this God language? Whoa, God language. That sounds like a very simplistic term lacking any theological depth here. Masking a profoundly disturbing political agenda. And that agenda is opposition to uh, abortion. Uh, the, the agenda is hyper chauvinism, is what he's describing as the agenda. Islamophobia, anti immigration, and the racial inferiority of blacks and Hispanics. By the way, none of which have actually uh, had quotes backing them up. Because this is a logical statement from a Christian world point of view and this here is also a logical statement and neither of these statements imply an actual fear of islam and number two this statement here doesn't refer to chauvinism and it's uh, a parenthetical because you're talking about christians in general and it, you're going to a specific of more uh, anti-immigration or anti-immigrant, this does not imply an anti-immigrant policy because it specifically relates to the border. And this has no proof behind it. In other words, you're, I think you're really making something up here, uh, dear author. Or you're, you're putting these things together and you're really, you're really looking at the puzzle before it's complete. Or at least you're, you've got puzzle pieces that I don't, and I don't appreciate that when I'm reading an article and I'm hoping that there's a logical, uh, a logical step-by-step -step path to where the author is trying to go with this, and I don't see that happening here. Okay, okay. Disturbing political agenda. It's the same mindset that motivated Trump voters in 2016. Although Trump uses far less religious imagery to make much the same case. And I appreciate it that Trump uses far less religious imagery because I don't think Trump would be able to pull it off, to be honest. The bottom line is that as much as I believe that Roy Moore is guilty of sex assault, you believe it, you already... You already believe it before he's actually been convicted. And I think this may be a problem here. You, you may think that it's a possibility, but unless you actually have direct evidence, I don't really see a reason to believe it. Now, of course, you haven't shared any direct evidence in this article, and that wasn't really the point of this article, so I don't really know. So I can't, I can't agree with you on that because I don't know everything that you know, apparently. He is also guilty of abusing Christianity and language about God. Now, that point I do have to agree with. Yes, some things that he said were definitely going a bit too far. And uh, you shouldn't really be mixing your Christianity with whatever nationalism you're having. I, I don't think that's okay. The former is a crime and he should be charged. Wait, didn't you already say he got charged earlier in the article? Um, let's see, uh, let's see, where, where is it exactly? Um, I guess he has been charged. He's been charged. He's already been charged. Don't, you can't double charge. <laughs> can't double charge him for the same crime. That's double jeopardy. That's illegal. There is no law against the latter. Um, well, technically speaking, you could go from a religious perspective, but that doesn't diminish the shame he and his supporters should feel at this abuse. And yes, that's right. There has definitely been some religious abuse here. And I, I do have to agree with the final point of the article, but a lot of the stuff in between was really going off the wall for me. Um, especially that logical leap uh, towards the end where I didn't really see where that was coming from. And a lot of this wasn't uh, put in a very argumentative way. I think this person probably assumes that whoever's reading this already has a lot of knowledge on these things and already knows these things and, and doesn't need all these things explained to them. 
And unfortunately, that means that the Huffington Post is becoming less accessible to uh, new readers who are unfamiliar with this type of language and therefore would not be able to really associate uh, anything meaningful from it. But uh, there you go. Is guilty. You can't say that until, until he's been convicted. Come on. Get some presumption of innocence. Have some respect for the law here. Is accused of abusing girls and is guilty of uh, abusing religion. There you go. How about that? That that might be more accurate here. Because I don't know something here. And you're not presenting any direct evidence that he's actually guilty. So I can't really go on anything besides what I already know. And since I don't know anything, the legal standpoint that I have to take is that there is an investigation and hopefully we find out whether or not he's guilty or innocent but until we find out that he's guilty we have to treat him like he's an innocent individual that being said uh, hypothetically speaking these things do have an impact on politics and therefore the, the hypotheticals of whether he's guilty or innocent do have some relevance, but it's important not to go too far with it. But uh, that's all I've got to say, really, t today. Um, my nose is plugged up because I'm a bit sickly. So if you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to go over an article with me, if, uh, or you'd like to comment on this article, and by go over an article with me, I mean actually... Uh, uh, we're both reading the article at the same time and we can both comment on it you know get a little bit of double commentary a bit of dialogue going there wow i've been going for 45 minutes and um that would be nice so please do comment in the comment section below on that if you disagree with what i've said if i've been incorrect somewhere please also comment i do like being correct and therefore i don't mind being corrected. So anyway, I thank you all for watching, and I will be seeing you all next time on Awotos Over and Out.